Hey guys, I'm Adam from Blue Line. Today we are with my buddy Jared from Brighton Anglers. He's the local resident expert for uh, kind of where we're at. We get a lot of questions asked about drift boats, boats, uh, kind of a lot of you guys asking questions and some beginner questions about how to get into the sport with a boat. So Jared's been rowing drift boats for a really long time. He's got a really great boat that we're out here today with. Wanted to bring you guys an episode all about how to get into fly fishing with a boat. I think it's just an excuse for him to make me take him fishing on a drift boat. But anyways, we're going to have some fun today. We'll hopefully catch some fish and teach you guys a little bit about uh, fishing out of a drift boat, what you should think about before getting a boat, you know, how to row a boat a little bit, you know, what you need to do before even putting your boat in the water and going from there. The tips and tricks. All right, so Jared, we just got to the boat ramp. What are some of the first things that we need to do before we get this boat in the water? You know, maybe even before getting to the boat ramp, take your boat to a local parking lot. You know, you got it hooked to your fancy new truck. You, you want to make sure you can drive it around. You don't want to <laughs> show up to a boat ramp. We're lucky today that there's nobody here, but you may want to show up to a parking lot. You know, your local Home Depot, Walmart, practice driving a boat behind your truck. You know, back up a little bit, do some things, because most of the time you're not going to show up to a river and have it all to yourself. And so before you get anywhere, practice driving a truck with a trailer backing it up into some tight spots, you know, turning around, learning your turning radius and things like that, and then you'll be good to go. But but we're here, we made it, we're gonna start rigging up the boat and uh, getting it ready to put on the water. And then we'll kind of talk about some things from there. And keep going. Cool. So we talk about rigging up the boat. What you wanna do is basically get all your stuff together before you're putting your boat in the water, standing in line, waiting for the other guys so that when you go and get in line, you're ready to rip. So as we're rigging up our boat here, Adam, you know, a few things you want to think of before you get too excited is, you know, one, everybody forgets to put their plugs in. You don't, you only do that once when you have the drift boat. Because then you realize real fast that you want to get back and put your plugs in. So don't forget to put your plugs in. No, I've never put a plug in my raft. Yeah, you don't need those in your raft, but in a drip boat, make sure you plug it up. Oh, God. Okay. Uh, you always want to make sure that you have life jackets because yep. even if you're not required to wear them, you, you, you need to have them on the boat. Life and, jacket for everybody, right? Yeah, no matter what water you're floating, definitely check the regulations. I've heard you say that many times on your videos, but pretty crucial. Get yourself in trouble real quick. You know, make sure you got everybody has a, everything they need for the day because you're going to be out there on the boat and weather can change, it can rain, it can anything can happen. So, you want to run through a couple things you keep in your boat uh, at all times, like some of the stuff that you keep in the main storage compartments. A few of the things I like to have in my boat when I'm fishing is. You know, simple little five gallon bucket, most people have those. I use it for hauling stuff when I'm going to and from the river, but while we're on the river, I just throw a little garbage bag in here and you can throw your trash, your cans, things like that, so they don't make their way into the water and also so they're not all over cluttering the bottom of your boat. Nothing worse than hooking onto a fish and trying to grab your net and picking your net up with a bunch of cans or trash in it. It's not cool. Uh, speaking of nets, yeah, you want to make sure you have a good boat net. We got our rising net with the extra long handle so that we can scoop up fish from the side and then I have it cushioned on the side so if I lay it on the side of the gunnel rail there it won't scratch up the boat or scratch up the net. Works pretty good. You know simple things like uh, koozies, we have bug scenes if you want to get out there and kick around some rocks see what's going into the boat. Bug spray, you know river tickets, we got our swag bag down there. Uh, I bring a wrist rocket just in case uh, I have to get sketchy on the water. The raccoon stepping up to me, I'll scare it away by flicking a little pellet at it. <laughs> <laughs> then all your fishing gear, you know, you got fishing gear, other things, you know, sunblock lotion, life jackets, cooler, you know, pretty so it's good to go. Definitely one of the things I'm jealous about being in this boat is that there's permanent storage that you can keep stuff in versus my boat. I've got a you know, lug my dry bags back and forth that I keep everything in. Yeah, talking about that, I have a little apartment in the back full of survival gear. We have extra rain jackets, first aid kit, 
other sorts of things that'll get us by you know spare plugs spare parts of boat accessories in case we break something we'll be uh we'll be ready to take on anything today so usually what you do when rigging up your boat you want to uh you want to do a couple of your straps still leave your main hook connection up front on so that it doesn't take away from you if you're going down a steeper ramp this one's fairly mellow but uh you know get it all ready basically to launch and then what i typically try to do is back up to about your axle you know, right about where your grease hub is and that's about as deep as you ever really want to go and then your roller should handle everything else off the, the back of your trailer so a little bit of just being nice and con uh courteous to the other folks might use in the boat ramp right just go ahead and have everything together don't you know putting your rods together before you actually get the boat in the water having uh you know when you get down to the river being able to launch your boat directly into the river and then pull the truck straight out so that more people can use that ramp yeah and at the same time when you put your boat in the water make sure you put it out of the way of everybody else trying to launch their boat so walk it either downstream upstream something or other so that people can get in and out fairly easy we picked today so that we knew we wouldn't have any other folks folks that we'd be battling so that we could uh, spend our time making this video and showing you some points but definitely if you're at a busy boat ramp just make sure you're courteous to the other folks trying to launch boats get your boat out of the way and spend as little time actually launching your boat as possible A couple things to consider when uh, when you're drift boat fishing or raft fishing is, is your shuttle. Like you know, we today brought it, brought the Grom in the back of the truck and stashed it down river. Make sure that uh, we have a way back to our truck here. You want, you want, you want me to show you how you do this in the pros? Yeah, good. Wow. You know, there's multiple ways to shuttle your vehicles, but when you're in a remote place that don't offer shuttles, you have to self shuttle, and that's either your buddy with their vehicle or bring something yourself we're pretty self-sufficient today but you know know ahead of time make that plan of shuttling how yeah. you're going to get a shuttle because you don't want to get somewhere and realize you're not going to get back to your car good point yeah uh, dri driving two trucks or your buddy has to drive as well or uh you know some popular ones if you're trying to do it a little cheaper would be a you know a mountain bike or a an e-bike I've, I've seen that pretty often um or also, you could possibly Google and check around and see if there is a shuttle service. A lot of places, at least out west, there might be someone that runs a shuttle. Or even back east, you might be able to find a canoe launch or a, ca a kayak rental place that would, be, that would offer to shuttle you back to your truck as well. Yeah, if you hire a third-party shuttle service, you know, they're, they're going to be a various range of prices. But, you know, you can pay that usually with Venmo or leave cash in the car. But always bring a little extra cash to leave a tip on the dash or, you know, on the console for the driver because... You know, like everyone, they could always use a few extra bucks and, you know, you leave a couple extra bucks in the car for somebody. They might not rally your car so bad through the washboards and, you know, maybe they'll put the key back wherever they you asked them to. <laughs> Good point. So, <laughs> Good tips. You know, be nice to people, they'll be nice to you. There you go. <laughs> you know, now that we got the boat in the water, ready to go fishing, traditionally what happens, whoever owns the boat's first one to row, but what we like to do is play a little game of baseball. So three strikes, if you miss it, fish three times in a row you're out you start rowing you know or if you catch a fish you already got a hit so then you're in the rowing seat so so that's kind of how we'll start today and see what happens that works with me cool. yeah holy shit that's a big white fish there So one of the biggest pros to fishing out of a boat, even if you love to wade, is the uh, the areas that you can access out of the boat. So even though we're going to do some wading today, this area would be nearly impossible to get to on foot. We have a lot of river behind us and a couple of really deep, lakey holes behind us to get to. But then over here, we've got a really nice shallow run. So even if you uh, love to fish, it's difficult maybe for you and your buddy to figure out who's going to row and who's going to fish. This is a great opportunity to be able to anchor up. We can bo we're can we both going to be able to fish these holes and some water that we wouldn't otherwise be able to access if we were on just on foot. So yeah, we've launched the boat. Now we're on the water. 
A uh, couple things you want to do before you really get into some aggressive water is just get comfortable in the seat, find yourself. Uh, you'll see that, you know, I leave my oars pretty fairly loose so that you can be wide or, you know, get them back to a good shoulder width so when stroking, you get a nice comfortable stroke and you can go from there. So first your stroke is a backstroke. You know, that's, that's the main stroke you want to learn, right? Right when you get going, backstroke, backstroke, both hands, same time. And then with that backstroke, you can go one-handed and that's going to turn, you know, the bow of your boat one way and then it's going to turn the stern the other. So you got your left hand back row, your right hand back row. And then another thing is your forward row. Forward's going to push you in through the water. So as you're pushing, you know, maybe you're in a slow spot, you want to get through it, you push through the water. You know, if you get into a spot where you want to make some evasive moves and get crazy, you can push with one arm and back row with the other. And that's going to turn your boat really fast. But that's only if you're trying to dodge something, which, you know, you're going to be dodging something the whole time. So that's what you want to do is while you're rowing down the river, you got to look ahead, plan your routes a bit. With a drift boat, especially, you know, you want to point the front of your boat as something you want to dodge and then back row and just keep back rowing and let the water take you around the rock or the tree stump or whatever it be. And then just kind of fiddle with it from there. There's a couple more technical moves, but master those basic ones first, you know, pay attention down river, watch the line and go from there. If you have a lake or a pond at your, uh, at your disposal, even a golf course pond or a little lake by your house, go launch the boat in some still water and row it around and get used to doing some of those techniques that Jared just talk, taught us. Um, another thing to remember is that with a drift boat, as Jared mentioned, you mostly are rowing away from danger, where with a kayak or a canoe, you're kind of steer it more like a car as going down the river. With a drift boat, you're kind of backing it up away from the danger. So that's a pretty big difference to keep in mind and why kind of learning those different strokes is really important to be able to evade some danger. Definitely the first few times that you have your boat in the water, be it a raft or a drift boat, it should be a really pretty easy river because there's definitely going to be some stuff that's going to surprise you with the way the water kind of grabs and moves the boat. If you're not familiar with reading water, that's gonna become something that you really need to start working on. And that means being able to look down river, see what the water's doing, and be able to know how that's gonna affect your boat. So we get asked a lot, what's the difference between rowing a raft and a drift boat? Or maybe just what is some of the differences, pros, cons. One of the biggest things for me is I love having the permanent storage in this boat so that you can store, you know, you've got the, the couple hatches that you can store everything in, keep things nice and dry if it's rainy. Uh, you know, never have to worry about pulling things in and out of the boat. You can keep all your gear and, you know, it's a, it's a big difference between a raft and a drift boat. I know there's ways to do it in a raft, but I haven't found it anywhere near as nice as a, as a drift boat. As far as the rowing part, uh, it doesn't take as much effort to get this boat one, uh, moving once it's already going, if that makes sense. So kind of changing directions and back rowing in the raft is a lot slower. If you need to move water, a hard boat, I mean, there's just nothing like it. Um, but my raft is a lot more nimble as far as being able to turn it like left and right really quick and maneuver really quick around rocks. I definitely see a pretty big difference between my raft and the drift boat for that. But once the drift boat's going, man, you can really move some water and, uh, or you can back row really well to be able to stop the boat in a lot faster current, which is also great. So if you fish a lot of moving water, I really do like the raft, but it is hard to beat dr fishing out of a big drift boat. You've got a lot of room to walk around. You know, the fishability is pretty nice. The storage is nice. If you were, you know, guiding day in and day out, I do understand why uh, some folks prefer the drift boat for that but I don't think I could ever get away from the from the raft for the versatility of being able to just launch anywhere I want being able to carry it and move it around not having to have a real boat ramp uh, where I'm going is uh, is a big one for us but well, definitely some like, pros and cons of each it's like driving a Ferrari versus a Cadillac you know they both are nice I heard it here first Ferraris and Cadillacs is this the Ferrari or the Cadillac? 
Oh, there's a Cadillac here. <laughs> Is my boat the Ferrari because it's red? Yep. I get that. So we just pulled up to one of our uh, favorite spots. There's three different islands right here where the water kind of spreads out. And these islands kind of keep it pretty shallow. Easy to get the boat through, but it gives us an awesome opportunity to park up the boat, anchor, and then for us to hop out and tackle it on foot. So even if you're the only one that knows how to row in your group, it still makes sense to possibly fish out of a boat. You can still hop out and tackle a lot of these different areas. It just allows you to cover a lot more water. So uh, we're gonna hop out and go uh, tackle a couple of these runs on foot. So whether you're just looking to buy a boat and wondering where to go float, where to use it around where you live, or if you're an extremely experienced floater, there's a couple resources out there that'll really help you with some information. Uh, the first one, we, I use Onyx a lot. That really helps me see some boat ramps, put-ins, takeouts, what areas might be national forest, forest service land, or like BLM land if you're out west, there's a lot of that around here, or state lands. That just kind of helps me understand what's private, what's public. Uh, for access. Another useful one for you might be trout routes. They have a lot of the boat put-ins and takeouts on their app. Might really help you out with being able to see where to put your boat in, where to take out at. And then Onyx would be awesome to be able to map your float to see how far the float's going to be for you. The last thing you need to be making sure you're checking, which is very applicable to us today, is the CFS or the flow of the river. So pretty easy, just Google search will show you uh, USGS data for blank river. That usually the first thing that'll pop up will be the flows for the river that you just searched for. Extremely important that you should be tracking for your fishing anyways, but that'll show you how high the water is. Maybe it's too high, maybe it's too low, things like that. There's no way for me to tell you that. That's something that you're gonna have to start uh, checking yourself and kind of monitoring and plotting yourself as to what the ideal flow rates are or CFS for the rivers you fish on. But something that we check a lot, at every, just about every time before we go out, we'll check the CFS. Those are some of the apps and the tools and resources that we use to be able to find these floods. What did we learn today? <laughs> That's what I'm asking you. <laughs> Don't come here unless well, you have a good fishing report that is recent. You know, sometimes you gotta take risks. <laughs> That's true. We took one today, but we didn't take any with the drift boat and hopefully we were able to uh, show a few people a couple tricks and tips about how to use a drift boat, but at the same time, how not to use one when you don't catch any fish. That's right, yeah. We could have caught as many fish not using the drift boat so, yeah, as we, we did staying at home answering y'all's emails and Instagram messages. We probably could have directed, <laughs> directed people to better videos about <laughs> catching fish, but you know, hey, we're doing all right. Well, that's okay. <laughs> but uh, we appreciate Jared being on again, uh, Brighton Anglers at whatever, is it just at Brighton Anglers these days? Yeah. Oh, BrightonAnglers.com? Whatever you want. There's all a .com it. now? There's been a .com. The .com forever? And, uh, com. You can find us on every social platform you're looking for. All of it? All of it. Snapchat? No, no snap. All right. Too old for that. <laughs> Alright, no bright anglers on Snapchat. Yeah. Uh, Jared's one of my duck hunting buddies as well, so he posts some cool uh, duck hunting uh, content, so make sure you follow him for that too. And thanks for watching. Hopefully you guys liked some of the tips. Hopefully you took something away from it. If you did, please like the video. If you haven't yet subscribed to our channel, it helps us bring you a lot more videos like this if you found it helpful. 
Thanks so much, guys. We'll see you on the water.